When you are certain of your right, you have no problem putting money where your mouth is. And this is exactly what Warren Buffett did in 2008. He bet $1 million to anyone, that's right, anyone who could create a portfolio of actively managed hedge funds and beat the return of the S&P 500 index over a 10 year period. He knew he would win from the start and he did actually just do that. In hindsight, his move was genius. So let's look right into it, right after you hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and right after you subscribe to the channel. What's up everyone, my name is Joris and welcome back to The Money Network. One million dollars, that was the bet. One million dollars for the person that could compose the best investment portfolio. In the one corner we had Warren Buffett, who chose a simple and low cost S&P 500 index fund. And in the other corner, anyone who would take up his challenge and build a portfolio consisting of five hedge funds. Ted Seeds, a formal co-manager of Protégé Partners, took up the challenge. So both men put up 500,000 euros in a zero coupon bond in 2008 and later when it matured in the Berkshire Hathaway stock. After 10 years, near the end of the bet, the $1 million invested actually grew to around 2.2 million. And that was donated to charity. But Buffett knew that he would win right from the start. He trusted that the low cost index fund would outperform the expensive hedge funds. In other words, he said that people like you and me are actually better off investing in the low cost ETFs, the low cost index funds. That is better than putting your money in more expensive and actively managed funds. Was he right? Well, yes, he won the bet in 2018 and he won it by a landslide. By the end of the bet, the 1 million that was put in the actively managed hedge funds had grown 22% and was now worth $1,220,000. In that same period of 10 years, Buffett's pick, the S&P 500 index, had grown to $1,854,000, a crushing victory. With that, Buffett proved to the world that you don't need expensive funds to make money. Anyone can invest in index trackers, and it's very cheap to do so as well. But how much difference is there really? Let's look at some numbers. If you invest in a worldwide tracker or an index tracker on the S&P 500, you are paying a certain cost to enter that fund. This is often called the transaction fee. Apart from this cost at the start, you're also paying a running fee, which is usually 0.15 to 0.25% depending on the specific tracker you are buying. However, if you, on the other hand, pick an actively managed fund, the cost structure will be a little bit different. Most funds ask for an entrance fee, a fixed percentage of your money that you are putting in the fund. And this is often a few percents already, and it really adds up over time. Apart from that, actively managed funds also ask for a running fee, which is a lot higher than the passively funds. In most cases, going from 1.2% to 2.5% annually. And lastly, some funds, especially hedge funds, sometimes charge a results-driven fee. For example, 20% fee on all the profits that have been made. All of these costs combined make your actively managed fund a very, very expensive option. Especially because the underlying is often the same as an index tracker. There's not much difference there. Now, if you're saying, I don't mind the odd few percentages here and there, the most important part is that I am making money. Well, of course this is true, making money is the most important thing here, but those few extra percentages will cost you a lot of money. If you invest 100,000 in, for a period of 25 years with a return of 6% annually in a fund without costs, you end up with 430,000. If on the other hand you invest that same 100,000 in a fund that charges you 2% in costs every year, you'd only have 260,000. 2% in costs result in a loss of return of over 40% after 25 years. That 2% doesn't sound so small anymore, does it? Now let's put all things together. 
So you are better off buying a boring index fund since over the longer period of time, nearly no one can beat that index. You could get lucky with picking the right fund manager and actually beating the market for a few years in a row. But if I were you, I'd take luck out of the equation. You are again better off with a boring and cheap index fund. Paying less costs means that you are losing less of your hard earned return. Huge index funds are often extremely diversified. Some of them have over 1000 stocks in their portfolio, while actively managed funds often select only a limited amount of stocks, making them less diversified and more prone to specific market risks. So three reasons, so three major reasons to pick index investing and steering clear of expensive actively managed funds. And who knows, maybe one day you will also issue a $1 million bet of your own. So what are your thoughts? What do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. Here at the Money Network, we thank you so much for all the support. And we thank you for watching, of course. Until next time.